Good afternoon. Welcome everybody to our UC Ag Expert Talk today. My name is Cheryl Reynolds. I'm with the UC Statewide IPM program. Peter Cusina is here also with us. He'll be running our polls and troubleshooting any technical problems that might come up. Please note that this webinar is targeted to growers and agricultural pest management professionals. Master gardeners can certainly benefit from participating, but the pest management methods presented, especially the pesticides, are not to be followed without a clear understanding of their legal use in home environments. So at this point, I would like to introduce our speaker today. We have Dr. Jalendra Rehal. He's a UCCE area advisor, um, integrated pest management advisor in Stanislaw County. And he's also the associate director for agricultural UCIPM. Uh, agricultural IPM with the UC statewide IPM program. And today he's going to be speaking on invasive brown marmorated stink bug and other hemipterin bug pests in almonds. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to you and you can go ahead and share your screen. Good afternoon again. Uh, so I'm IPM advisor uh, covering Northern part of San Joaquin Valley um, the, and uh, most of my program is focused on tree nuts and tree fruits um, in, in terms of pest management wise. Uh, if we go to, to, to the specific, it's more about the, the orthopod pest management. So mostly dealing with the, with the bugs uh, in, the, in, the, in the Central Valley, Northern part of the San Joaquin Valley region. So today I'll talk about a um, little bit about background on why, why um, called the, some of the hemipteron, that's uh, one of the group of the insect. Uh, we also call the true bugs. I'll talk a little bit about why these are important or what are the sort of basics of those group. Um, I'll also talk about some of the smaller bugs that are present in almond orchard. Um, also the, some of the larger and bigger size bugs of different, different family and different categories that I'll discuss those a little bit identification biology part and monitoring management part covered that way briefly before I get into the uh, brown marmor stink bug uh, discussion or talk. Um, the BMSB is a new invasive species so I'll cover in you know, basically a little bit of everything about this pest and what's the status, pest status of this insect in um, in California to date, and also share some of the additional resources at the end. So um, in general, you know, I know that there's a mixture of us here in this, um, in this group. So um, the, in general, we call, you know, any insect we call bugs in general, but for entomologists, uh, we call the, the bugs that are uh, within a certain group we, we actually call those bugs. Uh, so for example, here, the heteroptera, that's a one subgroup of the bigger, broader, um, the, the, the order of the insect called the hemiptera. And so all the bugs within that heteroptera group within that hemiptera, we call true bugs. Uh, these all have the kind of same, similar morphological makeup. That's why they are put together in one group. One, the one thing about the heteroptera, hetero means the different, and then the terra means wing. So even the one wing, there are two different textures. For example, if you look at that stink bug, upper part of that, uh, the wing is leathery, and then the, the bottom part, it's a uh, apex part is the membrane. So it, it is a one wing, but has a two texture. And that's why these all the two bugs are within the same group heteroptera. Um, all of these have these uh, stylets or you know piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. So where they have a needle-like mouth part punctured into the fruit. In many cases, they release some kind of enzyme into the tissue when they feed on, and that makes it easier for them to uh, suck the juice from that. Uh, fruit or even some cases that some of the insect they feed on the on the leaf or the stem. Um, regardless, they have this piercing and sucking mouth part that helps them uh, to get the food from their uh, fruit or any other plant parts. So here you can see the, some of the example of those uh, stylets um, of the, these 
different insect, different true bugs that is shown here. Um, I briefly taught on, uh, but I, you don't need to focus too much on this. This is a lot of uh, busy, this is a busy slide as you see. But one thing that I wanna make, uh, make a point here is that when the insect, these true bugs feed on the plant or the fruit, you know, they of course make uh, mechanical damage on that part where they feed on. But also the, not only the mechanical damage, they're feeding and the involvement of the different kinds of enzyme they release into that local portion, local tissue, um, they also change, tend to change the hormonal or physiological uh, makeup of, the, of that plant tissue, specific tissue. And so because of that, you can see different kinds of symptom because of that different kinds of enzyme involved in it. And because of that changes in the hormonal and the physiological um, the aspect of the plants, you can see the different kinds of the symptoms resulted in. For example, one example is, you know, abscission of the reproductive organ. So when insect feed on the fruit, early part of the season, those fruit will drop they're, that they're because of that imbalance. Other cases you see the gumming fruit, other cases is the cat, cat faced type of the dimple structure on the fruit outside. So different true bugs uh, have the different makeup of these enzymes and uh, produce the different kinds of um, symptom in the, in the fruit. Uh, but, but in a sense, they again have this more or less similar mechanism where they have this style it pierce into the fruit and uh, suck up basically the juice. Okay, so move on to the, some of the um, specific insect that we, um, that, that are present in the almond orchard and cause economic damage. Um, and so one of the group is we, we like to call the small bugs. Um, so here you can see the smaller in size, one, one fourth to one third of the inch long in many cases, even a little bigger in some cases, but these are the groups of the insect. They, are present in many nut orchard and even the tree fruit orchard. They are not um, like a regular pest, but sometimes when there are, they, they regularly feed on the vegetation and weeds on the, on the ground, but when, whenever they need, when the weed dry up or occasionally they move up to the trees and then start feeding on those. It's still, they won't be causing economic damage, especially in the almonds. Uh, pistachio, there is more, a little more serious, but in the almonds, they're very minor and uh, non-economical pests. It's still there present in the orchard. Uh, one of the smaller other insect is uh, something called a false chinch bug, as we see here. And when the trees are very small, one year, two years old, and thousands of these insects in moving into the, into the summertime, they may cause serious damage to these younger plants. But again, it's still the very occasional pest. Uh, this is a little more serious than the previous one, but it's still uh, the occasional pest. And again, their main host is the weed. When the everything is dry up in the August or September because of the heat and they tend to move to the, you know, almond trees if they are around. And when the trees are small, then that could be a little more serious as compared to others. Um, moving on to the another uh, group, uh, large bugs we call the leaf-footed bug. That's, there are three different species that are present in almond orchard. They're in different, uh, the, 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 they all are in the one family called the Coridae. As you see, they're based on the body shape. They're kind of like a longer brownish color, slender type of bugs. Has this leaf-like structure on the, on the hind legs, as you see in here. Um, in, in all the cases, that's what we call the leaf-footed bug. They typically overwinter outside of the orchard, move into the, into the orchard when the season begins and um, start causing damage. They're also, I like to call the sporadic pest in a sense that if they, they may not be present in all almond orchard all the year, in every year, but when they present, when they occur, especially early part of the season, they could do a pretty significant economic damage. So in that case, it is one of the important economic pests in, in almonds. They, they do two types of damage, very early part of the season when the fruits are very small in size, their feeding can abort the nut. And because of that, we see pretty significant nut drop. Uh, 
mid to late part of the season, like in in May, late May, in June, when they feed on the on these fruits, they can create um, these these kind of like a necrotic tissues on the kernel, and that's where they could do damage. Like you can see the gummings, and you can see these brown spots. And again, the mechanism would be the same. The, you know, they, they feed on and release the enzyme some kind. And because of that, you can see these, um, uh, the symptoms. Uh, another group is we call the native stink bugs. So these are the stink bugs that are native to the, to the US or to California in some cases. These are the more uh, few important ones. Green stink bug, Euler stink bug, a red soldier and conspiracy stink bug. They all have they all are in the one family called pentatomid. Um, they are sealed sea bug, as you see in here in a structure of the, all these bugs on the back, kind of more or less similar. And they release a, some sort of pungent um, defense spray. And because of that, we, we, you know, it, we call this stink bug. Um, I don't want to go in too much detail into it, but if you look at the green stink bug, they're fairly big size, three fourths of inch. Uh, kind of more or less similar size for this one, Eula stink bug also. Uh, for the green stink bug, they have these liners on the, on the south side and has a dark spot in here versus the Eula has this yellow color spot uh, all over its, its body, especially on the back of the head here and then also on the, on the back surface. Um, these are the another group, red soldier stink bug and conspar. They're relatively smaller in size compared to those uh, that I mentioned. It's about half inch in size in both cases. Um, sorry about that. Um, and um, they also have these, you know, red red soldier. So the the markings on the soldier, and then also has a, something called the red feet. The the kind of the terminal part of this um, leg has this um, reddish color. Um, so that's the, some of the distinguished characteristic of this red shoulder. For this one, if you looked at the, on, on the leg, they have this brownish spot and that's why we identify the conspire versus red shoulder sting bug. We do have also plenty of the rough sting bug and spine shoulder sting bug present in the orchard. These are the predatory ones and they don't do uh, damage. Although the other native sting bug that I mentioned previously for one, they cause um, economic damage. So again, the more or less the 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 uh, the ecology would be it'd be the similar. All these sting bug they tend to overwinter outside of the orchard, move into the orchard, and start causing damage. When they feed on, they produce these kind of um, uh, the gumming fruits and these gummy fruits may not translate 100% into the kernel damage, but some cases they will translate into the kernel damage, depending upon the time of the year, uh, the, the fruit development stage and et cetera. And so if a lot of out, uh, them are out there, even though a small portion of that, uh, these fruits um, has damage on the kernel, still it will be uh, economically significant. In, in, in many cases. Um, so they have more or less the kind of similar life cycle here, egg and laid on the mass. These are the nymphal stages and then uh, change it to adult stage. Uh, all these combined large bugs, the leaf footed bug and the stink bug, we don't have any treatment threshold based on the UC IPM or the based on the research so far. Um, and some of these leaf-footed bugs, especially early season kids, cause pretty substantial damage um, versus the native stink bug that I described, they are not problem early part of the season because they tend to move to the, around the mid June or July or even August uh, during that time. Because of that, fruits are already in a bigger in size and then there will not be any nut drop because of the native stink bug feeding. That is different for the leaf-footed bug because they tend to come early part of the season and cause uh, nut drop. And um, so mostly we do have uh, some of the, uh, the broad spectrum insecticide by the Detroit group, few neonicotinoid um, uh, group of the insecticide that are um, used when there is need to use, especially focusing on the leaf-footed bug 
early part of the season because it can be serious um, if we don't treat in the early part of the season. So, but today I'll talk a little more about the brown marmorated stink bug, which is also within the same pentatomid group, which is the same with its uh, additional type of the stink bug uh, in that native stink bug range, right? So the invasive brown marmorated stink bug on the right, as you see in here. Um, so it's, it's about the same size like these bigger bugs, about three fourths of inch. And how do you, we identify BMSP? Because there are also similar sting bug, kind of similar looking sting bug present in there too. So one of them is rough sting bug on very left, as you see, and very common in, in, in orchard system. And majority of the cases when people ask me about whether this is BMSP or not, all the times I see this rough sting bug as a reference. So um, the, so the most important aspect to differentiate BMSP with the rough sting bug is, of course, to look at the antenna for BMSP. It has a two wide vents on the antenna, which is not, uh, which is lacking in rough sting bug. The other important aspect is that when you look at the tip of this mouth here, uh, called something like a blunt or the smooth type of head in here, Versus if you looked at the rough stink bug on the very far left in here, you can see this tooth-like structure on the side. And it also has this soldier sort of like a spine, so the rough surface on the soldier versus the smooth surface for BMSP. So these are the couple of criteria that we use to differentiate between rough stink bug versus the BMSP. For conspersed stink bug, the most important aspect is of course the two white bands and then this presence of this uh, brown spot on the, on the leg. So these are the most, well, these are the closest one um, that we get confused with the BMSP and I hope that this ID part will help to differentiate that. Okay, so a little bit background on BMSP. BMSP is a new invasive pest, relatively new at this point. Uh, it started, it first detected in the late 1990s in the, in the mid-Atlantic region, actually in Pennsylvania. Now it's spread over 47 states. Um, it, even though it's introduced at, at that time, but the economic damage was actually recorded and uh, we start talking about BMS more and more after that point is since 2010, when the significant economic damage occurred in apple and peaches in mid-Atlantic region in East Coast uh, area. It, it has a very wide host strain, more than 170 different host plants reported, even more. Um, these BMSP, they overwinter as adults in the winter time in people's houses and barns and shops and wood piles and outside of the orchard. So as you see in some example in early infestation in 2009 or 2010 or 2011, the people were sweeping these BMSP in the winter time from their homes, uh, from their houses. Um, so it, it can be pretty serious in terms of if the population is there, if they could not find other, you know, structure out there, then they'll, they tend to go to people's houses and it can be a pretty nuisance, nuisance issue. So this is a latest map from the stop bmsp.org, which is a resource for all things about stink bug, BMSP, all things about brown marmorate stink bug. Uh, all the researcher, all research in the past 20 years or so, I'll put it there in that, um, in that website. And there are a, a lot of articles and identification and other things that if you like to learn more, you can, you can go and uh, learn from there too. So as you see in this map, what you're looking at here is color. The red color are the state where the BMSP has been a pretty significant, pretty, pretty severe agriculture as a nuisance problem. If you looked at the, uh, the orangish color one, including California, we, we categorize into the second tier, I would say, uh, agriculture as a nuisance problem, but not to the extent, not, not 
severe to the extent what we've seen in these states with the red coloration here. And there are also the uh, states where they are present, they are established population there, but not causing pretty significant damage, not causing significant damage in agriculture. It's just a nuisance issues. And some states there is only detection. So, so far 48 plus states plus a few provinces um, in Canada, the BMSP has been uh, detected and found. So if you looked at the California history of BMSP, uh, even though it was detected in 2002 and then established in 2006 down in Southern California in LA County in that area, the bigger population or the population that is causing economic damage now in the, in the crop it actually started in 2013 when there is a big population of BMS we found in Sacramento in downtown Midtown area. So that from that population, we're finding the BMSP in 2015 in the Northern San Joaquin Valley, where I work. Um, and the first crop in infestation we found in peaches in 2016 and almonds in 2017. So from that point, we're finding more and more areas uh, with the BMSP infestation. Still, the BMSP in terms of its presence in the crop area, in the, in the agriculture production, uh, like in the, in the orchard, is still limited to the Northern San Joaquin um, Valley region. Um, but at the same time, the BMSP population has been established in 16 County. So majority of the cases, those population are established in urban residential area because as, as you remember, uh, probably that I talked about 170 different host plants present there. There are a lot of different um, host trees like uh, Chinese pistachio, catalpa, tree of heaven, um, various kinds of ash trees. A lot of those uh, ornamental trees are the tree of landscape importance are also the host of BMSP. That's why they establish in the urban area first and then move into the agriculture area. So, so far we have the 16 counties with established BMSP in its urban center, and then three or four counties were finding causing damage in, uh, in the crop. So this is a place where we're, uh, BMSP was found in 2013, that's in the, as far as Central Valley. Okay, yeah, moving on to the BMSP again, continuing infestation of BMSP presence in the, in, in the, in the crop. So um, this is the first time that we're seeing in the one orchard where the BMSP was infested in peat. As you see the, some of the damage there in the early season. Uh, we also put the traps and that's the kind of confirmation of the different adults. Um, you know, 25, close to 25 adults we kept um, throughout the season in one trap. Um, in 2017, we start seeing the BMSP infestation in almonds. So this is also the first report of uh, uh, BMSP infested in almonds in, in California or anywhere else. And you, as you see, the nymphal stage, egg mass with the first instar uh, nymph in it, also the, some of the um, damage that we recorded from that particular block where we found the BMSP for the first time. Here and after that point, we're seeing the BMSP activity on, on almonds in, in different, as you see there are the multiple adults feeding on it here. Even the, after the you know, nut is dry, after, close to the harvest, we're seeing the BMSP feeding on it. Um, and typical symptom is here. It's a kind of more or less, well, it's similar to, the external symptom would be similar for BMSP leaf-footed bug as well as the native stink bug because when they feed on, the, the plant basically react and then produce these gamosis and, and there. But the difference is that the BMSP, they can present in the early part of the season and also cause the nut drop. At, in addition to the leaf-footed bug also do the same thing early part of the season, but native sting bug, they come later, they don't do the uh, typical nut drop um, in, in almond orchard. 
Okay, so here is some example. This is the almond dropped from because of the BMSP infestation that is to, uh, that we reported in one of the orchards in Stensis County. As you see the multiple uh, the adults feeding on it. When you look at these fruits and cut the fruit, you can see the brownish color developing uh, kernel inside. And so these are the nuts that are basically dropped uh, because of the BMSP feeding. Um, on it, and it's it's a pretty substantial yield loss, and because of that, so so after that we were kind of pretty, um, you know, the 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 BMSP become a serious issue in in the orchard system. So we start looking at some of the options to monitor this, and also trying to find out what kind of damage it does, what's the seasonality of the pest, um, you know, how 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 we can assess the different other factors in the orchard system. Uh, and also, of course, we need uh, some of the tools that immediately we needed uh, to manage this pit. So we start looking at these options and I'll try to look at and uh, provide some of the information on that. So early part of the um, California infestation, we use these two types of traps. So one thing that for the BMSP were lucky in, in, in the sense that the BMSP in the East Coast infestation early because of that, they already figured out uh, you know, the attractants for BMSP. And because of that, we, we, we had these traps that were able to use it and the lures that is already you know, developed and that we're able to use these lures to attract the BMSP population in different orchards. So this is sort of like a seasonal presence of the BMSP adults, as you see here, uh, that's uh, April, uh, April 25th. This, this is a population I would call that's an overwintering population. So when they overwinter in the people's houses and barns and et cetera, in the winter time, when the temperature warms up in the mid March and so they start moving into the orchard and that's that population, overwintering population. Later we see that the, another bump in here around the early July in the Northern San Joaquin Valley, that's a first generation and later we see the second generation. So we do have, we believe that we have the two generations per year in California. It's kind of more or less similar um, trend here also, uh, although we did not have that much activity of the overwintering in there, um, we do have still the first, first generation and second generation. Again, all of these orchards that I'm talking about still have relatively low population. And so because of that, sometimes you can see the trend, other times you may not be able to see the trend. For example, this orchard that we were capturing the BMSP throughout the season in both this pyramid trap as well as the sticky trap and more or less consistent, pretty consistent throughout the throughout the season. If we looked at the overall trap capture in these two different kinds of trap, uh, the blue one is uh, the sticky trap and then the orange one is adult capture in pyramid trap. And more or less what I can say from three years or so data is that uh, the sticky panel trap is equally effective in terms of detecting the BMSP population in the orchard. And in the orchard system, the, the pyramid trap, when you use these traps, it's, it's just not that easy to use, right? So there are two flaps you need to put together, put another stake and then hold them there. Plus this is also very costly, $35 plus just for the trap. Um, versus this one is, uh, is not that expensive. And also the sticky, trap, it's easier to use um, in these stakes. And these all, both traps for BMSP goes on the ground because, um, because the nymph are also attracted to the lures that we put in here. And when we have the place where nymph can crawl up and go into the traps, these are also effective for both nymphs as well as Adults. This is in peach orchard, but its principle is the same. This is an almond orchard. Overall, so far we're seeing 2017, 2018, we're seeing a lot more activity. Uh, we're not seeing that much activity in 2020, but in the meantime, we're seeing more orchard has BMSP uh, population. So I think that there are also other, uh, other a lot of factors uh, playing into role, I'm sure. Uh, you know, humidity, uh, winter temperature, 
uh, the, the temperature in the summer, um, seasonal temperature in the California versus if you think about that in Oregon or Washington or uh, mid-Atlantic region, it's quite different there. Um, even though they were able to manage to survive and kind of spreading, but their spread to agriculture area in California seems to be slower uh, compared to what we have seen in the East Coast and other, other regions. So um, we're still in the, in the process of figuring out um, that. But uh, one thing is, it's clear that even though there are, the population is not increased significantly compared to other places, still the, uh, the, the spread to the different newer areas is it's, 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 it's going on. So I think um, uh, we'll basically uh, see how far they can go as far as, you know, in the Central Valley where there is in the t summertime, the temperature will be pretty high and the dry condition um, and also not have that many host plants compared to, you know, other, other states. Um, especially in the monoculture system where there's almonds and almonds and almonds everywhere. Um, so they might have a little bit, you know, difficult time to establish in there as compared to where there's a lot of host crop out there. Um, but still, I think it's a, it's a pretty important uh, pest and it's causing threat to the area where we're seeing the damage or where we're seeing the, its presence. So based on those observations and those data in the past three, four years, we're pretty confident that the sticky panel trap can be used to monitor BMSP activity in the orchard. And we're using this trap and recommending that to the growers and to PC at this point. So here again, the sticky panels in both sides, the sticky, this is a stick goes on the ground. There, are, there is a lure in here. So there are two components of that lure goes together in here. This is some of the BMSP captured in one of the, one of the trap that I installed. Not only that, we also want to encourage growers and PCA use the visual sampling and bitray sampling, uh, look at the presence of these um, insect in the orchard, as well as the potential damage by these, by these orchards, by these pests. So uh, next aspect, aspect that we wanted to talk, so, so, since we know that now we have the trap, we can detect the BMSP population, but we don't really know, um, you know how long or uh, how long the, the, BM, the almond is susceptible to this pest if the pest is around um, throughout the season. So we, we did this sort of limited kids based study um, in Stenisus County, in the in almonds, basically releasing uh, these BMSP inside these cages throughout the season, pretty much 2018 to 22 weeks from the beginning of the fruit development stage all the way to the holiday split time or the before, just before the harvest. And different cages were infesting every week because we wanted to see the extent of their damage they could do in different times, right? So in a timeline. So that was our intention to see the, what is the vulnerable stage of the, of the almond for this uh, pest. So these are the, some of the pictures you see the external symptom based on the BMSP feeding on these nuts. You can see the gummings, yellowings, brownies, coloration and the outside. Inside when you look at, you can see this um, internal gumming of the nut meat, brownies or necrotic spot on the, on the hull as well as on the, on the inside on the fruit. So from there, what we found was very early part of the season, starting from the around uh, first week of, well, the, the, around the last week of March, we started infesting from that point to all the way to week seven, which was around the first week of May, we see pretty significant nut drop. This is a nut drop percentage inside those cages when we're infesting the, you know, those cases with the BMSP. This is non pearl this is Monterey. So in some cases, there were first two or three weeks, they were pretty close to 100% not drop. All the nuts would drop because of the BMSP feeding. Um, when you looked at, and, and the, all those cases we harvested at the harvest time and look at the, the percentage damage on the nut meat, what kind of damage we're seeing on the nut meat from these every week infestation in different um, fruit um, 
stages, fruiting stages. And we see that in the April type of infestation, pretty much all the gummings and the brownish color, more or less similar here in May, June also, we're kind of seeing the similar thing, maybe a little less severe. And even in July and August, during the just before the harvest, even when infested, the that cases with the with the BMSP, we see these uh, brownish stinks on the kernel. So that proves the point that you know they are pretty much active throughout the season. If they are present throughout the season, they will be able to cause economic damage. Um, throughout the season, although the severity of damage could be less in the later part of the season compared to the early part of the season, as we see, but they are in fact capable of doing uh, the damage. Okay, um, yeah, let's move on to the next part where we also, now we know that if the BMSP is present in there in a bigger number, throughout the season in the in, in the area. And we know that based on the trap capture earlier, we see if the population is there, they can present throughout the season um, and they can do, do damage and almonds. So now we're kind of trying to figure out what kind of damage they do versus the leaf-footed bug, right? So leaf-footed bug, also the similar bug, they uh, sporadically present in almond orchard and cause damage. We, we kind of use more or less similar approach where we have these case nuts where we, you know, basically um, case the BMSP in, 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 in number of the cases versus the left-footed bug in other cases and look at different category of the damage. So here we're looking at the nut drop, injury to the hull and kernel damage. The blue one is BMSP and lifted bug. So one thing I want to point out here is that this is a percentage damage after three weeks of that infestation. So after three weeks after we put those bugs into the cages, we evaluated these. And when we looked at this, this is not drop. So you can see that there is percentage damage, leaf footed bug caused more nut drop early part of the season compared to the BMSP. And uh, it probably it's a function of the leaf footed bug is, you know, it's still it's a stronger and bigger size and has a relatively longer stylet. And it probably caused more mechanical damage compared to the BMSP early part of the season and uh, causing even more nut drop because of that. But if you looked at the later part of the season infestation, which was the first week of June, we see the BMSP is causing little higher damage as compared to leaf footed, as compared to the leaf footed bug, which is not surprising. Leaf footed bug, when you season go pass by, they are less, they cause less economical damage compared to the early part of the season. Versus the BMSP, it seems like they could do uh, more damage at that time too. I guess there could be the, you know, the nature of the feeding, they could be the persistent, even though there are, um, the fruit is kind of mature, they still keep feeding on it. Uh, or, uh, and or um, could be that uh, the enzyme that they are releasing into the into there it make it easier for the BMSP to feed on and cause damage more compared to leaf footed bug. But this is what we found uh, based on our work in there. So we're also interested, at least even though we did have limited number of water to work with, um, because it's a newer pest and when we found the infestation, it's already late to do any kind of research and trial. We did some of the observational kind of uh, assessment also in the some of the orchard. So here, this is a, a BMSP infested orchard. You see the early nut drop damage is pretty substantial here. What we did was we wanted to look uh, the find out the edge effect of these BMSP infestation in all orchard. So we put the traps in this uh, in this transect, as you see in here, um, on so north side as well as south side, in at, at 40 feet apart from the edges, right? Well, 40 feet apart between among these uh, traps, and we started from the edges like this, like here from the edges, and we looked at the trap capture, we looked at the drop knots as well as the kernel damage at harvest from these different sample points. And here uh, is the total BMSP captured from July to October from those different points. As you see, uh, age 40 feet, 80 feet, 120, 160 feet from the age. So going inside, these are the more internal. 
but we don't see too much difference in terms of the capturing the number of the adults on those traps. Again, this is different than the early detection of the BMSP. This is a mid to late season uh, the work. So still the age, putting the traps in the age is still very relevant, especially in the early part of the season when the BMSP is moving into the orchard from the ages. But when the population is already inside the orchard, it doesn't seem like there's much difference within the short you know, intervals that we put the traps in terms of trap capture. But when we looked at the overall damage at the harvest, we collected the sample from different points. We evaluated three categories, gummy kernel, kernel with the dark spot, and also the dimpled or depressed, so stribble, severely stribble kernel. In all three categories, we found a substantially more damage on the ages, age as compared to the others. So few things it can prove. One, one, point, it, uh, the one point is that even though BMSP trap tra is effective in, for the detection point of view, it has been known that they are not representing the ex exact population in the orchard. So even though we're putting the traps and throughout there, whatever number we're seeing may not be representative of that particular you know, locations. Still, you have more um, uh, adults in the age as compared to in internally, but that does not reflect in the, in the, the traps. But that, that basically reflect into the damage um, as we evaluated the, the, the damage in this way. And we, we know that it's a very age-driven or border-driven pest. One of the things that we also kind of looked at and, you know, when I take a picture of these first row damage versus third row damage versus fifth row damage, even though we did not do any quantification of this at that time, but you can, you can clearly see that this one versus this one versus this one. So as you go inside the orchard, you have less uh, nut drop. And we know that the BMSP is a landscape level uh, pest where they like to go in different hosts and goes in different um, or feeding even the, within the season. Um, so the, the presence of some of the other host uh, plants, one of the example is something called the tree of heaven um, here. Um, so this, is, this has a, this seed party structure, they BMSP love it. So this is one of the most important or the most attractive host of BMSP outside of the crop tree of heaven tree. And then if you looked at this orchard and then these, this area here, you can see on the right top corner, that patch, that's all tree of heaven. So this is basically the contributor for this almond orchard. It's just, they're just keep coming from this side. And that's why no wonder that we're seeing more damage on the edge as compared to the internal side of the orchard, which is, which is pretty common in other states and based on the other study also. So as long as they have source nearby, they have the other host nearby, the severity of this pest would be, uh, would be higher. So lastly, I wanna talk briefly about the, some of the control options that we have for BMSP. Again, we're, it, this is new to California, also it's still new to the other states also. We're still trying to figure out other ways to determine the economic threshold, other biocontrol options and other things are still under, under the research things. But the main line of defense at this time is the, having the insecticide. Once you have this population moving into the orchard, a big number, you need to do something to, to manage it. So this is not the least from California. This is the best on the work done in the other states. And But the most effective insecticide, if you see in here, is mainly the pyrethroids and a couple of neonicotinoid. So those are the options that are effective, but at the, in the meantime, we know that these pesticides are not, you know, uh, the beneficial insect friendly in many instances, especially when you have to apply for the foot in the early part of the season that can kill the beneficial insect predators and that can exacerbate ex other issues, other pest issues or mites issues and et cetera. Again, these are the list from the other state, just for the information point of view, 
all the use and follow the level requirement for the past. I also tried to do some of the work in the lab uh, because of the limited resource that we have on BMSP, look at the mortality of the BMSP and using the lab IOC. And we're kind of similar, we're seeing the similar thing here, like bifenthrin, which is a pyrethroid, warrior, which is another pyrethroid have uh, more percentage uh, BMS mortality, mortality as compared to others that's computer control after 43 days. Um, and again, it's, these are also not perfect in terms of even we're doing that, that in, the, in the lab. Again, we're in the process of doing it more and more. Um, it's, uh, it's just, uh, just uh, one of the um, things that we started doing it. And um, it also requires a lot of BMSP population. So we're slowly moving into that direction. Also, there are organic options also for BMSP control, mostly the name-based insecticide. This is, again, the, the information we collected based on the work done in the other states, put it together as a guidelines for the BMSP in almonds, provisional guidelines, um, and uh, with, uh, with uh, Frank Jalam and uh, I co-authored this uh, publication. You can also take a picture from here if you want to look at it. Um, the, the, the information there. We do, we're do. we hoping that the biocontrol would be the option in the future. Uh, there is uh, the, the BMSP specific parasitoid that are present at least uh, in, um, in the in different, um, the different state at this time. And we're hoping that we'll be able to, one day we'll be able to utilize this. But again, we're far from the practical utility of this one. So ran out of time. I'm not going to detail into that, but BMSP is uh, still spreading, start causing damage in the crops, and we need to, we're doing more and more work in, in order to understand this pest and try to figure out how to manage this pest. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this. We already covered that part, and I'd like to acknowledge all the funding sources and then people helping on this uh, work, and then also the, all the co-authors in this presentation. So. Okay, so we have a few questions in the Q&A. So um, the first one um, was about the traps. I think it's the pyramid and the sticky trap. Are both traps allowed in areas with endangered species such as lizards and butterflies? Endangered area. Well, I'm not sure about that. I think I would say that if it's, if it's in, the, in the orchard, right? For example, almonds and peaches, uh, orchard system, we we can use it, but in terms of engendered species, and it also doesn't have any um, um, like it has a BMSP specific lure. So the pyramid trap is safer. Sticky panel trap it still can catch randomly some of the insect, um, but I, I but it's nothing um, you know kind of broad spectrum type in that regard too. But I'm not 100% sure in terms of whether it's, you know, endangered species rules uh, allow or not. Okay, um, the next one was just, uh, do the other stink bugs cause similar almond damage as the uh, brown marmorated stink bug? They look similar from outside, but in terms of economic damage, they are late in the season and not as severe as BMSB. Uh, so the BMSB is, they can, could, could do the or not drop and then also the kernel damage uh, early as well as mid and late season. But the other native stink bug are more late season. And also when they feed on, uh, many cases we see the gummings on the fruit on the outside, but not the actual damage on the kernel. So you're still okay, even though there is always still the feeding damage on, on their fruit later part of the season. So in that regard, it's, it's different, but it's also sometimes hard to differentiate without knowing the, you know, whether the BMSP is present or not, what insect, what bug actually caused damage because their damage tend to be, look similar. The severity is different, but the damage, uh, sort of nature of the damage kind of look similar. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one is, uh, does brown marmorated stink bug cause more damage in pistachio orchards or almond orchards? So the pistachio 
We have not found any uh, BMSP in commercial pistachio orchard at this point, to my knowledge. Although there has been the work done by uh, uh, Dr. Kentena lab, as well as Mark Hartle lab, um, they looked at the pistachio, uh, the pitting damage by, you know, the, the BMSP caused damage to the pistachio in one case, uh, detached fruit in other cases, the, putting the BMSP in the cage is like similar to what we did in almonds. In both cases, they could do uh, damage in pistachio. So they are capable of doing damage, but we have not found them in commercial orchard uh, yet at this point. Okay. Um, do stink bugs have any economic value uh, such as flavoring or food coloring? To my knowledge, no. Okay, and um, the last one that we have right now, uh, do we know what attracts the BMSB to the tree of heaven? Well, it's, 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 it's a fruit. Um, whether the day they sense that based on the something volatile comes or something, or they'll just use that as a, you know, like similar to other, other uh, things out there. So BM, for BMSP, it's more, whenever there is any fruiting structure they found, like especially the seed part type of fruit, they will go in and cause damage or feed on those, survive on those. One of the things I've seen in Tree of Heaven is that even the winter time or even the late fall, even though the fruit is not green enough, but they still, they have the seed structure in it. And then there's these piles of the seed together that could still support the BMSP population. So maybe that's the reason we're seeing more on there, or I mean, they prefer that it has a smaller seed, so maybe it's easier for them to feed on. Uh, but yeah, at some reason, the tree of heaven is a lot, um, well, probably the most attractive in, the, in terms of, if we compare them with the other landscape uh, tree type of, um, the fruit, fruiting structures. Okay, it looks like that was the last question. Um, I don't see any others in chat either. Okay, well, I mean, that that's all uh, in terms of the Q&A. Um, I would like to thank you. Uh, thank you, Cheryl and Peter um, and the UCIPM program for organizing this. And most importantly, thanks all the uh, participants today. Yes, and thank you for your presentation. Um, it was really enjoyable to hear. So thank you again for presenting and uh, we wanna thank everybody for being here today. And we hope we'll see you back at the next one next month.